So, uh, let's start. So I would like to introduce the topic of inner source today. I don't know if you know about inner source. So, some of you, okay. So, we'll see what this means later, but in short, it's about bringing lessons learned in the open source world into large corporations. So this is not open source, Ooh. but uh, <laughs> it's about learning how to do open source, right? Because we are learning the skills. We are learning about how to collaborate, communicate, how to be transparent. So this is inner source. So the talk of today is about having some kind of uh, higher level talk in this case, not that focus on metrics, perhaps in some use cases. So we'll go, we'll be flying through some use cases. And it's about bringing the discussion of, does it make sense if we mix uh, this open source metrics, health and so on with inner source? So we'll see from my perspective, it may make sense. Because at the level of metrics, so perhaps at the level of goals, we are not following the same goals. But at the level of metrics and tooling, because people uh, and, uh, in large corporations, they are using GitHub Enterprise, GitLab, they are using the, the Atlassian stack or some internal uh, infrastructure. So it happens that from chaos, the, the, the tools we already have, we can measure this in large corporations. So, well, maybe it makes sense. So you will say at the end. Uh, a bit about me, so I, I will use these three main uh, URLs here, which is chaos, inner source, and Viterja, where, where I work. So as I mentioned, the problem of large corporations nowadays is, uh, sorry about that thing, confidence. Uh, it's about this, so we have silos of, of developers. So this means that we are producing once and again uh, the same or a really similar piece of software uh, in this country, in the next country, and in the other country. So uh, if you think about this, it means that uh, we are not talking to others, right? So if we look out of our corporation, who else is working in this way, in this geographically distributed way? Open source communities, right? So we can think of any open source project that they are basically working in this way. So they know how to do this. So this is this is the this is one of the goals of inner source. And specifically, uh, as I'm uh, really pro open source, my goal in life would be to bring all of these skills into large corporations because this means that we are just uh, click away to produce open source because we all will understand what open source means and how to work. So we we don't need to go through the process of legal marketing, security teams, etc. Right? We all understand this. So this is inner source. Um, so. If we think about the basics of open source, this is it, right? So we are talking about collaboration, transparency, community, etc. But large corporations are nowhere near from this. So they don't understand this. They need to learn about this, right? Uh, so the discussion for chaos is, what if we try to analyze the basics of all of this? How do we measure transparency? How do we measure collaboration? How do we measure community? So we've been We've been uh, doing this kind of analysis in somehow, but not that in deep. So that's perhaps the main goal of this presentation. So I'm working groups of, of the inner source commons, so we are all aware. So we have a patterns community where we have a, a bunch of proven solutions for certain problems, which is a pattern, the definition of a pattern. Uh, learning path where we are producing specific videos that are available for everyone, so you learn about inner source, what this means. Uh, the governance where we are hopefully having a foundation uh, during this quarter, so we've been going through this for, for a while. And then there are some ongoing discussions around for uh, metrics discussions, which is the uh, main topic in this, in, in chaos, dev portals, uh, tools, and some others, right? So this is, this is more or less the inner source ecosystem. So this is uh, uh, the inner source commons, is a group of practitioners where we meet from time to time, uh, twice a year, same as ChaosCon, and then we discuss about all of these topics. So one of the whole topics is definitely metrics. Uh, the problem we have, oh, this is not uh, a GIF, but it's basically blah, 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 blah. You know nothing, John Snow. Uh, <laughs> because we have all the same problem. So uh, we need to measure to know. And uh, we have this problem here in KF for open source communities. We have this problem if we are community managers, community advocates, developer advocates, developer relations. And we have the pro these problems in large corporations. So if we need to understand what's going on, we need a first phase of awareness, so to measure, to understand what's going on. And then once we have metrics, if we start applying policies, you are the one applying those policies, I'm the one measuring. Uh, so then we can check if those policies are working or not. Right. So this is where metrics and use cases uh, come to, to help. Uh, so the question is chaos and inner source. Um, 
the way we are working is quite similar or quite the same as we are doing in chaos because I'm uh, in part because I'm in both communities <laughs> so uh, I'm bringing this idea of goal question metric approach to one place that I bring this idea to of goal, uh, goal question metric approach to, to the other thing so the goal question metric approach uh, is a method that we follow to understand the proper metrics that we need to follow to, to, to measure in order, in order to, to have a proper answer to the business goals because it happens and probably you have faced this that when you are measuring things, you start measuring things for the pressure of measuring things. But you are measuring things because those are the metrics that you are able to retrieve. So the way uh, we try to structure our minds, either in inner source or in chaos, is let's start with the goals. That in this case, for inner source, are these ones. And uh, once we have them, then we define a, cert a certain set of questions. We'll see an example later. Okay. Uh, so then we can see how this works. And then at the very end we have a bunch of metrics, some of them might be answering the same question once and again, and so on. So, well, just to let you know inner source, we are trying to guess what this means so far, and what this means in terms of metrics. Um, some examples, I try to match this one-to-one -one, uh, by some, ad some advice from uh, some person in, in the room. So. If we think about some of the use cases that we have in open source projects or open source program offices, and then we compare this to product development or inner source projects, well, perhaps we are using different, uh, a bit different concepts, right? But at the end, we are measuring the same. So we are trying to measure, for instance, at the level of process, which might be the first one, we are trying to measure how long it takes to do things, to close issues, uh, to, to code review something, to, to close a merge. Um, to understand the several iterations, the life cycle, right? So this is what we are trying to measure. It happens that perhaps if we go to corporations, they are using a different uh, nomenclature, but at the end, what we have is kind of the same. So we are trying to measure things that happen, right? So, uh, and, and it happens again that we are using kind of the similar um, infrastructure. So that's the interesting thing here. So we can have like, well, instead of responsiveness, here, which might be the time, the first time to respond for a developer to another developer that is coming to the community, to the community for the first time, because that developer is a volunteer, which is something really important in open source communities. Then, what if we uh, translate this into business units? So then we have uh, this difference of instead of organizations, we have business units that are departments in large organizations. So then we can basically analyze the same. So we can go to Jira and say the first time to uh, answer certain questions. Uh, life cycle, effectiveness, uh, BMI is backlog management index, it's a metric used for uh, to understand the maintenance effort, how good we are, which is uh, at the end the number of closed uh, uh, issues versus, so the, the number of uh, closed issues that the community or the business unit is able to deal with versus the number of open things that are coming, right? So then you can compare if this is evolving in the right way. Uh, then we can talk about in open source, community engagement, organizational diversity, contributors growth. And then in, in a more corporate environment, we can talk about uh, well, business unit engagement, reusability, adoption, right? And this is what we are interested. Remember that we want to foster collaboration, we want to foster uh, transparency, communication. So this is what we are uh, trying to measure. And Sharon was uh, before talking about Pony, uh, an Elephant, and so on. So I'm kind of uh, summarizing this in some in certain risk analysis. Because if we only have a team working in one, uh, in, um, if there's only one team working in one piece of software, then uh, if that team is moved to another place or the branch uh, in the corporation is removed, what happens with that software? We have the same problem in open source, right? Territoriality is an analysis we've, we've been doing for a while, which is uh, uh, what's the percentage of files in the source code that are being modified only by one developer? So then again, this is if highly territorial projects are more risky from that perspective. So we are using terms that are quite similar, right, in open source than in inner source. Um, all of this is already supported in, in Grimoire Lab. So this is the place where we are, uh, let's say, uh, centralizing everything. Thank you. Uh, so you have the URL. Um, so all of them have their specific uh, dashboard, let's say. So this is the summary of everything. Uh, the example I, was, I, I mentioned before is, so we have some goals, we have some questions, and then we propose a specific panel, right? So the goal here would be uh, to increase inner source projects engagement within the organization. Okay, so uh, then we can split this into several questions, and 
you are specifically applying certain policies, right? So perhaps you say uh, project engagement, so you are uh, rewarding developers if they are doing their first commit to a different business unit repository, for example. So that's the policy. Then we can check if that's actually working, right? So then uh, we have certain questions as which projects contribu contributors interact most with, uh, general trend of my contributors, or what path my contributors are following, right? Or, or the collaboration between the different business units. So uh, this is an example of the of, of, of this panel. This is a, of this uh, questions answer. So this is a, a life cycle panel. So I will I will go through it. Um, the bars are active repositories, and the red line is the is the trend. So you can see if this is going up or not. Uh, then what we have here is the some uh, certain repositories by number of commits. So this is a heat map. You have here all of the repositories you're analyzing. This is over time. And then uh, what you can see is where most of the uh, contributions uh, are taking place. So then we have certain repositories that are quite important. And then we can see, well, I don't know if you see this at the back of the, of the room, but we see that there are certain repositories that are starting. They have certain life. And then basically that life ends. So we have the life cycle. We can see now, basically, in a, in a quick view, what's going on. And the other way, so we have projects that started this time and then they finished, and the other way around. So we have projects that never existed and then they started. So we can see the life cycle. And then these are commits, so activity, and these are authors, so it's the same concept. We have repositories here on the left, on the y-axis, and then on the x-axis we have uh, over time, and then we have more the repositories with uh, the highest number of authors, so the darker, uh, the heat map, let's say, the, the green color, the, the more authors have been contributing there. And again, we can see uh, repositories or projects or, or business units with certain activity and so on all the time. So this is, this is an example. Another example about collaboration. So this is uh, an analysis we've been doing with uh, Red Hat, with OpenSea specifically. Some of you may, may have already know about this. So each of the dots are developers, right? And right in the middle, we have the projects. So then. Uh, this is Kubernetes, the big star. This is what we call the jellyfish. So this is the analysis of, of the CNCF system plus OpenSea, because that was the analysis we were doing in this case. And then we have all of the OpenSea developers here, right? So uh, if we see like a bubble of this, it means that that developer has been working only in that repository or in that project, okay? Uh, this is open source. So then we see like there is a lot of collaboration across all of the projects, right? So this is what this means, all of this means, right? So if we have developers with an edge to Kubernetes and an edge to OpenSea, this means that all of these projects are contributing to both, right? And then same here. So we have these three developers that are working in Fluent, in OpenSea, and in Kubernetes. So then we can zoom in and say, who are they? What are they doing? If we go to the inner source space, then we can say, who are they? What are they doing, right? So what can we learn from them? They are the ones bridging the community, right? So they are the one extending the community somehow. So it happens that in inner source, we are all working in isolated ways. Uh, so inner source should be at the very beginning like isolated like stars, right? The goal of inner source is to become like this, a mess, a chaos, right? <laughs> so this is what we want to do. We want to foster collaboration. So this is, and with metrics, having this goal question metric approach is how we, we are following this. Of course, in the same way that we have this, uh, we can analyze uh, some other examples. This is uh, part of the same analysis, and in this case, comparing IBM contributions and Red Hat contributions. Uh, so the green ones are IBM, and the red ones are Red Hat. So we can see for, uh, this was some analysis we were doing for Kubernetes, OpenSea, Container, Dejager, so CNCF, and OpenStack in this case. So we were interested in understanding what's going on there. Uh, in this case, so Red Hat has uh, more developers in general, but then you can see like in open open stack, there are there's some overlap in the interest in the in the project before let's say the acquisition. Uh, then in Kubernetes probably aware and then uh, as well and then some others are not. So uh, these are some analysis that we can. Yeah, question. Sorry, could you say what red was being? Yeah, about? red is Red Hat. No, Makes I sense. don't see the red and green. Oh, oh the color uh, blind. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> color. Yeah. Okay. So I, I will try again. So. This part of OpenStack, the left left side is mostly red, the right side is more, mostly green, and then in Kubernetes uh, there are there is a mix of this. The rest of this is mainly uh, red hat. So, sorry about sorry about the color. Yeah, yeah, I, I was not aware. 
Um, yeah, so this is uh, this is the talk we we given together, and well, this is still uh, working in progress. So, how we've been uh, participating together? Uh, well, collaborating. So, from chaos to Linux source commons, uh, in other some corporations that are already using Grimoire Lab, uh, by some community members and so on. We had a couple of presentations at the Linux source commons in Baltimore together with Anna. She's there. Uh, and some interesting discussions around metrics with, uh, with the form of, of patterns. Uh, the other way around, inner source commons. So, inner source is bringing kind of new use cases. You can see uh, perhaps two requirements for Grimoire Lab, um, in this case for, for Viteria. And the point is that we, we are not focused on analyzing open source software. Ooh, I know. But in any case, there are some things that are quite common, right? So, this is, this is where I would like to drive the, the discussion. Um, so if you're interested in inner source, uh, I'm the local organizer this time. So it's happening in Madrid, it's a lovely city, and it's uh, right after Easter week, um, the 14th, 16th of, of April in Madrid. So you can have some more information at innersourcecommons.org. Um, this is all for today. So questions, comments, concerns? We have two minutes for questions. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Questions? No? Uh, uh, yeah. Is so, it one? Um, <laughs> the metrics approach that you've talked about for InterSource and that you demoed <coughs> is largely focused on distributing uh, contribution activity within the company, which is one goal for, uh, for InterSource, mm -hmm. but not always the only goal. And by mm -hmm. way of cool. example, um, InterSource is also often an approach that can be used to attempt to drive adoption of internal services that have been developed that are having awareness problems mm -hmm. and so on. Have you done any thought about the metrics uh, around that space in particular and adoption of projects from other companies? Yeah, so the way we are measuring adoption in open source is we don't have access to certain servers, so we don't know things as uh, perhaps downloads or similar stuff that might be popularity metric as well. But in the inner source field, we have access to the server, so then we are playing with some more information that we may have. Uh, so at the InnoSource Commons, we've been discussing about reusability and adoption. There are some people that are using uh, certain metrics as if there are other business units participating, just participating, so open issues, uh, communicating in the, the mailing list or in a Slack channel, then we start assuming that they might be interested and perhaps they have adopted it because they are kind of advanced user, right? They have opened an issue and so on. So in this case, what they are doing is, uh, so we have a business unit that develop typically at the very beginning something. If there are as many uh, business units around them, we can say they have reused the software n times. So then they are assuming, okay, we are saving off this amount of budget because they are reusing the software. So this is the way in this case, uh, there are some people, not directly us. Thank you. Uh, 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 Tom first, yeah. Um, hi Daniel. Um, so uh, one of the things that we've struggled with is kind of getting the data so that you can get the metrics in the first place. So, you know, identifying each contributor's <coughs> business unit, things like that. Um, and I think in general, there's, there's so much that you can do. Where would you recommend that you start? What's the easiest hmm. metrics to start getting? So, the way I, I would suggest to do this is, uh, first, have a centralized place where you have all of your data, and you know that exists. So this is gonna be your your cauldron, if I can use that. So it's where you will take basically your food, right? Uh, but don't start analyzing anything. Try to have first uh, this, uh, the, try to have a clear picture of what you are following in the short term and in the medium term, and then you will have the answer. So I don't have a proper answer. Typically in inner source, what companies are doing are starting trying to understand adoption in the first case and then collaboration if they are starting to collaborate. Because one of the first things that everyone is doing is to start uh, certain pieces of infrastructure, so then people start working there. So are my policies about collaboration and so on working? So these are the two main areas, I see. Hmm. Uh, so uh, we are out of time. Camille <laughs> and Zodia, you're up next. Thank you very much, yeah, Daniel. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah.